Welcome into Vegas Nation Mailbag. I'm Elaine Wilson and he's Gilbert Manzano and we're here to talk about all things Raiders including last week's performance against the Chargers, their upcoming bout against the Seahawks in London. So let's just go ahead <laughs> Let's rip this Band-Aid and talk about this Chargers game. Gilbert, we were so optimistic. I know. I, I, I gave a lot of positive takes, <laughs> and I was, you know, speaking highly of the Raiders. They finally turned the corner. They got some offense going. They're number two in, in, in total yards and offense, and they go and give their worst <laughs> performance of the season offensively. Uh, they, they couldn't get anything going. It was a, just an awful game. It wasn't like they got blown out. It just Nothing happened. They, they, they couldn't get it going. It was it's just bad football. Bad, yeah, ugly football, turnovers. Yeah. I watched the game again yesterday. I'm like, why am I still watching this? This, this is terrible football. I don't know. It's, it's a big setback. Like, there's, sometimes there's a game where you can find a couple positive, but this game j just burned the tape. It was that awful. <laughs> and our predictions were way off, but I must say, <laughs> I did pick the Chargers to win you this did. one. The, so. the Raiders burned me. I gave them a lot of optimism and positive <laughs> takes, and I, I think I gave them 40 points to score. Yes. I, I, so you what take you the doing? credit on that one. What I was are you awful. Doing? So. No, we both thought that this was going to be quite the <laughs> shootout, but yeah. in, in the mental tally, I've got the win there. <laughs> so they were, they were some terrible uh, defenses. They're both yeah. giving up 30 points per game, and they only combined for 30 the whole game, it seems like. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It was just rough all around. The offense wasn't clicking as much as they had in the previous game where we saw a ton of offense, right? So yeah. all this, all these positive steps in the right direction with Derek Carr and all of his receivers all of a sudden just went south. Yeah, down the drain, nobody got it going. Uh, there is some bad... Uh, Martavis Bryant had a decent game on the stat sheet, but he had a bad fumble mm -hmm. where it, caught, it was yeah. like a 14-point swing there on the way, and Derek Carr's interceptions, we'll get to that too, but man, it was... Marshawn Lynch didn't get anything going. I, I, I can't find something positive. No, not really. Let's talk about that goal line interception because John Gruden had something to say about it. It looked <laughs> rough. It was on third down, right? No, first down, actually. First down. He's done a, a couple of those first down interceptions in the red zone before. All right, so really rough, and this is what John Gruden had to say about it. Interceptions are bad on any down. First down, second down, third down. He's too good a player to throw any, and I believe that. I think we can correct these interceptions. We are going to correct these interceptions. I think he's aggressive, and we're going to be coaching him <laughs> to be aggressive. All right, I just don't like this off the bat because, of course, interceptions are bad yeah. on any down. So why are you throwing the ball on first down at the goal line? How about that last line? I think he's aggressive, and we're coaching him to be aggressive. So <laughs> you're saying it's bad being aggressive, and you're letting him be aggressive? I, I don't yeah. get that quote there. But yeah, when you're throwing interceptions on first down in the red zone, that's costing your team points. And then it's just a total momentum killer. Derek Carr leads the league in interceptions with eight interceptions. He only has seven touchdown passes. That turnover uh, ratio to touchdown is really awful. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess if you're coaching them to be aggressive, that's what you want to see. I, I don't get it. Just don't make their interceptions. You keep throwing the ball. Right. But but there's like good aggressive in games and bad aggressive in games because yeah, we saw Sean McVay take a risk this week that people loved going for it on fourth down in his own territory yeah, to yeah. end the game and that was awesome. You like to see that kind of aggression but a goal line pass on first down is just not the answer no. I feel like and especially when he was just having a rough game up until this point. Yeah and sometimes it's okay to be predictable run the ball on first down try it see if you can't get it you still get two other cracks to throw the ball. And this one was just straight to Melvin Ingram. Like, why not try to go on the bootleg and try to run out? In a lot outside? of coverage. Yeah, a lot of coverage. Why don't you just try to move out? Maybe something happens and just wait it out. If nothing's there, just throw it out of bounds. You still have <laughs> two more downs. And he just threw it in there. He saw maybe a white jersey, and he was like, you know what? Let me throw it up there see what happens. It was just bad football. I don't get it with Derek Carr sometimes with these interceptions. I, I think he's a great quarterback. When it comes to these mental errors, there's no expl explanation for it. I don't get what he's thinking. Uh, again, maybe it's the whole Gruden factor where he's telling him, you know, you got you to move the ball up the field, and he's just, you know, feeling mm -hmm. the pressure a little bit. Exactly. Comment down below what your thoughts are on Derek Carr's performance this week and in the week previous, because, again, there were some shining lights, some good moments with Derek Carr in that game against the Browns. So who do you think is the more true Derek Carr? The, <laughs> the Chargers Derek Carr or the Browns Derek Carr? Man, I just don't like the Derek Carr making turnovers. I think right. he's, he's still... The Browns, Derek Carr, but with a mixture of the bad turnovers, Derek Carr, because I don't know, he, he's going to get the yards. I feel like he's going to keep. I don't think this game that we saw last week with the Chargers is going to be a, a reoccurring theme where he's not getting anything going offensively. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to, you know, get points and move the ball the, down the field. I'm just really concerned about the turnovers. Are you going to cut that down? I don't know about that, Derek Carr, yet. Yeah, and again, if they're going to keep 
being aggressive, who knows if that means more turnovers in the future. I mean, there's something to be said about being aggressive, and then there's something to be said about just smart playmaking in general, right? Yeah, and sometimes it's okay to give up a few interceptions if, if you're like maybe in your own, you know, territory and you're going deep and you're taking a shot and then they get it, they get it, they get it picked off in their own, in their own territory. That way it's, right. it's like a long punt. Not when you're in the I, I call that, and I've said this on Nevada Preps, a dime piece arm punt. Yeah, it's, it's a very specific phrase it's, it's, used for that situation. You're looking at, you know, you're taking a shot and if it doesn't work out, then that's a, it's a good way to look at it. It's a long, yeah. what, how you call it? A dime piece arm punt. We're, we're when it's accurately <laughs> arm punted to the other we're team. Gonna, uh, put it short. What is it? D some. <laughs> D, D P A P. Yeah. We'll get that in the stats. We'll right get it in there. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Let's talk more about this Raiders offense. The Raiders managed to a season low, 294 yeah. yards against the Chargers, Ooh. but they racked up a season high of 565 yards against the Browns. That's monstrous. Yeah, that's like like half, right? That's double. You, you went pretty much, it was 600, 300 pretty much. And how do you go that low from a great Browns game when you score 45 points, Derek Carr over 400 yards passing, two receivers went over 100 yards. Marshawn Lynch, I think he got over 100 yards rushing. Everybody was making the stats in this great Browns game. And I was really high on them in this mailback show a week ago. And then you put up that stinker of 294 yards. It's not good. I, it's it's a it's a division rival. You're in LA, which is pretty much your home it's, city. It's home. It, yes. There's no excuses for that. Such a, a, a I don't want to call it a beatdown, but just a a a, mel a mental letdown because they were in that game till the end until that Derek Carr interception. It, it was I think it was like three three at one point, maybe even six six. It was tied, and it, it was such, even the Chargers. Man, it wasn't even a yeah. good game for them. It was just a bad game overall. But I. I I don't get it. When you have a game that bad, what do you do? Is it you just forget about it? Is that, is yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's the thing. It's because there were so many. It was. It was so close in those first few games of the season, right? It was. This could have swung either way. Yeah, things. Things kind of just crumbled at the end. So there was some optimism there of like, okay, well, you saw a lot of good things <laughs> in the first half, so that's promising. And then they finally put it together in a full blown effort against the Browns in overtime. And then here we are, of course. Yeah, and there was a one point where Philip Rivers could tell what defense they're going to run. I think he, he was like, hey, nice base defense right there. And, and, and he told one of his guys, run this route. Like, that's embarrassing. When Philip Rivers could tell what defense you're running, Yikes. that's not a good look. Yeah, no, not at all. Let's go to our first comment from Aaron Hernandez. Dude, you are here every <laughs> week. I appreciate it. The Raiders played just as bad as the Rebels this weekend. Okay, I don't know if I'd go that far. I don't know if I'd go that yeah, far. They Rebels were, they were favorites in that game, too. Were bad. Rebels were bad this weekend. But they get, they get what, a 50 burger? Or 50 yeah, or I like believe so. It was, yeah, it was really rough. Let's not so, go that low. Come on, I, <laughs> I don't think the Raiders reflect the Rebels, but they are definitely in the downswing of this season already. And it's it's so early in the season. They have a chance to, to really improve things, hopefully, later in the season. But it doesn't look good yeah. for the rest of the Vegas season to football. this point. Not, not a good Vegas season. football is not good right <laughs> Can we now. call it that already? Vegas football? Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll call it Soon to be Vegas that. football? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take ownership. But it's fine. Um, let's talk about the defense a little bit. Paul Gunther's defense is ranked 31 out of 32 teams. Whoa, is that good? No. No, I don't think so. I think that's second to last. <laughs> um, the team is 24th in passing defense and 28th in... Oh, my God. Yeah. Go ahead. So 28th the last one? in rushing defense. That's not good. That's rough. That's, That's really bad. rough. What what has been going wrong for this defense so far? I can I can name one thing. Can we go one show without mentioning the name? <laughs> no, we are not going to go one show without mentioning the name. <laughs> go ahead. Khalil Mack makes a difference <laughs> on this team. That's it, obvious. Those stats show that Khalil Mack is making yes. a huge difference if he's on that team, and him being gone is obviously affecting this Raiders. Team. And again, I, I'm, I'm looking bad. I'm taking the L on this show because I gave Paul yeah. Gunther his credit a week ago. I'm like, he finally got the turnovers. He got the pass, pass rush going against the Browns. And they just, again, another stinker from this side of the, the, the ball. The defense was not good. Man, Garen Carling couldn't stick to Keenan Allen. Uh, Daryl Worley was getting burned too, and he just got back. Uh, Marcus Gilchrist couldn't make a tackle. The second there was poor, and the D-line was just absent. There was nothing going on with the D-line. The linebackers do not make anything, you know, any tackles or even anything in the pass coverage. They're not doing anything right. This defense was poor a week ago, and they're giving up big chunks. Like, every mm -hmm. time... Philip Burrows was dropping back. It seemed like it was like an eight or ten yard gain for them. So this defense for Paul Gunther took probably four or five steps back a week ago. Absolutely. I will stop mentioning Khalil Mack 
when this defense can put together a <laughs> full effort on their own and I thought that was a week him. ago. They had a bunch of turnovers and, and – Man, I guess maybe I was just fooled for one game. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. what. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with this <laughs> defense. But hopefully they can step it up against the Seahawks. Let's talk about some of the key matchups in this uh, Seahawks game over in London yeah. on Sunday. It's actually going to be at 10 a.m. local time, so you guys won't have to wake up, set okay. your alarms too early to catch them. Let's start with Russell Wilson versus the pass rush. <laughs> that pass rush again? Do they have one? I, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so. And and Russell Wilson is just an entity. He hasn't been doing as well this season in the team as a team. Yeah, but, but when you're doing poorly, you need a good medicine to come and help you out. That's the Raiders' defense, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I th I think th I think Russell Wilson has a chance to just run all over these Raiders yeah, this week. Sometimes these London games are weird, maybe because they're both West Coast teams. They're going to be a little tired and droggy, and you, you don't feel right. So maybe, but I, I don't know. Russell Wilson likes. He makes magic. He makes when the things are going. Even when he were getting, even if creating a pass rush, Russell Wilson could escape the the pocket and make some wizard play, and he, he'll he'll burn you. I know he's not having the best season, but. This Raiders defense is not that good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say it nicely. I don't want to say atrocious, <laughs> or, but th they're not the best right now. And Russell Wilson, he just got Doug Baldwin back. Uh, Ty Tyler Locke is a good receiver. Uh, I know he doesn't have a, a good tight end right now. Uh, the running game is a little shaky, but when Russell Wilson has the ball, he can make something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. I think this would be a good opportunity for the Seahawks to just take advantage of what's going on on this Raiders defense and really come together as their own team and show that they're still they're still the Seahawks, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's not forget, it wasn't too long ago the Seahawks were in the Super Bowl. That's not the same team that they have now, but exactly. something like the Raiders, to get them back on track for the rest of their season could be very helpful. Yeah, and the Seahawks are, are you know, I don't want to say they're at the bottom. I know they're not the same as they used to right. be. But they almost beat the Rams a week ago. The, the mighty Rams were number one. And they're undefeated right now, 5-0. and oh. They had that game, so you mentioned, I think, that, that crucial fourth down. Mm -hmm. That was key. If they didn't go for it, they would have punted. it. Maybe Russell Wilson wins that game. He's Absolutely. that good of a player. He could do it at home. Uh, they also beat the Cowboys. I know the Cowboys are not that high. But, you know, this is a good Seahawks team, a decent team. But... Their O-line is banged up. So if you want to create some type of pass rush, Bruce Irvin and Arden Key and mm -hmm. Mo Hers, Paul Gunther, this could be the week because this is not the best O-line. So if you can't make something with this O-line, then I'm sorry, it's going to be a long year. <laughs> we are going to get to that O-line in just a second. Another key matchup in the Seahawks game, but we've got more from Aaron Hernandez. This is just hilarious. No real identity on D. It's a mess. And so is my mental health because <laughs> of this team and their inconsistency on both sides of the ball. I hope you feel better, Aaron. He's at I, least watching. Some of these, uh, these fans are already done with the team. They're not going to watch anymore. They're already on. They're, they're starting the, the tank for Boza. Boza campaigns. They want to get their big D-line in yep. the draft. But there's a lot of football. Watch some of, some of these mm -hmm. Raiders. I know it's going to be painful, but if you're true fans, stick it out for at least one more month. How about yeah. to Halloween? Every, every fan base goes through the highs and the lows. This is definitely a low. Very but that means highs are coming. So <laughs> Harry also says, I hope they clean their act up before they come to Vegas. Uh, yeah, actually super important if they're gonna wanna fill, put butts in those seats at that stadium. Yeah. Man, they, it's helpful if your team's good. <laughs> <laughs> they got this season and next season to get some momentum going, but yeah, it seems like a rebuild project right now. Like they're, they're building that, <laughs> that stadium right now in Vegas. All right, so let's go to that next matchup that you were mentioning, that offensive line against the Seahawks defense. Now this, this isn't the Seahawks defense that we've seen in years past. No. Uh, I was looking at their depth chart right now. Uh, Quinton Jefferson, Jerron Reed, Shamar Steven, Frank Clark. That's their uh, D-line. Who are these guys? I, I, have, I don't know <laughs> any of those. This is not Michael Bennett. Or, <laughs> or Richard Sherman or yeah, and, anybody and that could. Cliff Abreu and yeah. yeah, and Earl Thomas is the only guy I, I used to know on this defense, but he's not there. Well. He's injured. He's injured. Yeah. And Bobby Wagner's still there and KJ Wright. They're still there. But other than that, the nine other guys I've never heard of. Yeah. No, not at all. Which, again, maybe just matches what the Raiders are going through right now because they've had a couple of key injuries on that O-line. Yeah. So, I, again, this is not a, – a, again, a week ago I was praising the offensive line for the Raiders. And, but those injuries finally caught up. You know, the right. inexperience caught up. And the good thing, they're not facing a very, you know, stacked defense. Maybe they could kind of, you know, figure it out this week and kind of get by. But 
you know, Colton Miller was playing with with a knee injury. He didn't look great, but he was mm -hmm. toughing it out at least because there was nobody behind him. If he right. didn't play, what are you going to do at left tackle? And yeah, that's concerning. And then Brandon Parker stepped up to play, but he didn't have a great game playing against Melvin Ingram. Uh, man, uh, Assem Kelechi and Assembly didn't play. That's your star guy. Your key player wasn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Penn is out, so that's not for, for, yeah. for depth-wise. Yes. That hurts, so they're really banged up and shorthanded. So maybe this uh, obscure uh, D-line for the Seahawks could do something. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a little more evenly matched in, in this sense because of the defense. Yeah, that's I, I would have made the, the O-line the, the favorite in this matchup, but they're, they're hurt. Yeah, exactly. All right, third key matchup, Beast Mode. <laughs> Beast Mode, who used to play for Seattle. He's going against his former team. Is this... He's, he's played against the Seahawks since he's been in Oakland. No, this is the no? first time. They did not. Wow. Because he was, he was retired one season, and the Raiders did not play the Seahawks a year ago. So this is the first time. So this is the first time they're... they're I wish it was in Seattle. It's in London. Yeah, that yeah. would be a lot more fun, That's, right? Yeah, but at least he's playing his former team. This team that has, is, like, is missing a bunch of players from that Super Bowl year. But mm -hmm. they're still playing against the Seahawks and Pete Carroll. Mm -hmm. So I would probably give Marshawn the advance in this, knowing what he did again a few weeks ago. Yeah. But... Not what he did against the Chargers, <laughs> yes. If he can, if he can replicate that performance against, again, like we're talking about this, this newish defense. Yeah, and a week ago help. he didn't get an opportunity to do much either. Uh, he only got nine carries. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're kind of playing catch up and you want to throw the ball, but it wasn't that big of a blowout. You can still get, feed Marshawn Lynch, man. Sometimes he breaks off these long games, but why don't you give him a few more carries? And nine, nine carries, I'm gonna get it done. Uh, this being uh, Marshawn's, uh, I guess, revenge game, you want to call it that, <laughs> I think John Green will give him more carries to kind of show what he can do. And also, Marshawn has just been frustrated. He, he pretty much almost, he nearly took off his helmet. I know he unclipped his helmet. He was about to throw it, throw it to the other side right. of the field after, after that interception instead of giving him the ball on, on, on right. first and one. Exactly. Do you, do you not learn from the Super Bowl? you got to <laughs> yes. give Marshawn the carry. I was just thinking the and same thing. I think Super he had Bowl. a flashback because he was angry. Right. And, you, Marshawn, when he's angry and he speaks up, usually he gets his way the next week. So I think he'll get more carries. Yeah, I, I would think so. Obviously, Pete Carroll will be able to prepare this team for what he knows about Marshawn and true. what he likes to do. But I, I still think that Marshawn kind of has the advantage in this one. Um, we got another comment from Johnny Jamie. To me, it looks like Carr is playing scared. Not the same Carr hmm. from a couple years ago. Raiders? Four. Okay. Four. He's, he's still supporting. Life. I appreciate it. Yeah. When will we see Gruden go full Chucky? Oh, that's <laughs> frightening, especially with Halloween around the corner. Uh, when do you think, Gilbert? Full Chucky. Full Chucky. What does that even mean, Man. Larry? He seemed disappointed last week. He didn't seem angry, so we're not we're not there yet. Yeah. But disappointment a week ago I could see that he was like man like I, I'm coaching I'm doing everything I can and not showing that's where you see frustration but mm -hmm. yeah if you get a few more L's he's gonna go f a full-on Chucky but to go back on the Derek Carr com comment of him playing scared I thought he got mm -hmm. over that he shook that off two yeah. weeks ago uh, I don't think he's scared I, I think he's still attacking the field he's, he's moving up he's, he's even with a banged up O-line he's getting pressured but he's moving around and he's taking chances down the field I think it's just he's doing too much. It's, it's, it's upstairs, the, the mental part of the game, where he's like, yeah. he's, th he's overthinking it. Maybe, again, it's maybe the whole complex Gruden offense, but he needs to settle it down. I know Gruden said that we coach him to be aggressive, but sometimes when you're the best quarterbacks in the NFL, they take charge on the line of scrimmage. When they see something they don't like in the defense, they do an audible, they change the play. Right. Derek Carr needs to, you know, stop relying on John Gruden so much and rely on yourself. You know, if you want to slow it down, slow it down. If you, if you feel like... He has making a bad play by throwing a first down. Then you give it to Marshawn Lynch. You have that type of lead where you're the, one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. So take charge Derek Carr. So mm -hmm. I don't think he's scared. He's just overthinking it right Yeah, now. it seems like maybe it's less scared and more just like bad decision making in certain Yeah, and he's got to you know, fix that problem. Exactly. Interceptions are not good, but he's mm -hmm. getting the yards. I know last week is a game you want to throw away, but before that he was... He was moving that ball pr pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're going to get to some rapid-fire questions. you got to <laughs> answer these quickly, Gilbert. Is, okay. Gil is Gruden making a mistake by waiting until Thursday to leave for London? Our reporters are already in London. I'm just saying. Wow. 
Yes. No, so yeah, that's a definite yes. yes. Yeah, you're making a mistake by waiting until Thursday. You you play on the West Coast. You're not a New York team. You're not on the Eastern Time Zone. That, I think that's an eight hour difference. Yeah. You're wasting a whole day in the air, so you're pretty much getting there. I don't know by Friday afternoon or something. Mm -hmm. And then you, and Saturday you're not doing much because it's kind of a walkthrough day. So you pretty much miss the whole adjustment period of being in London and practicing there and kind of get a feel for it and getting your body right. I don't get what John Green is thinking. I know John Green is he's kind of afraid to fly these on these long mm -hmm. trips. I think he said one time he, he had a practice in Tokyo and it kind of kind of he didn't really right. like it. Mm -hmm. But it's not all about you, John Green. Maybe you take the later <laughs> flight and you send your team early. Let them get adjusted. Uh, I, I don't I don't get this decision, uh, but we'll see if it's the right move. He said he did research on it, so I don't know. Maybe he has some good research. I, I don't, know, I don't know. I'm just looking at it right now. It's almost 11, so people are starting to take their lunch breaks here in Las Vegas. It's <laughs> almost 7 o'clock in London. That's a huge swing for these players to adjust to. All right, next question. Did Gary on Conley lose his starting Ooh, job? Man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the easy way on this one and go TBD. <laughs> TBD. I think it's still early for Gary on Conley to, to lose his job, but... I don't think Gruden likes him right now. Yeah. Uh, when Daryl Worley came back, he put him in the... I know Ke uh, when Gary Conley started the game, he was a starter, but he got burned by Keenan Allen. And after he saw that, he's like, forget about you, Gary Conley. I'm going <laughs> to put him Daryl Worley, and he got most of the snap. It's not like it, it didn't make a difference. He was still, you know, also getting worked by the <laughs> Chargers wide receivers. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Gruden just loves the, the older guys, the veterans. He likes to have take a chance and experience. But, man, another draft pick that you're kind of just... You know, throw him by the wayside. Right, it seems like exactly. He's letting his guys play, the guys he drafted in 2018. But any, anybody drafted before 2018, it seems like John Green is not giving him a chance. He's And I don't know if he's done with Gary Conley. I thought he, he was the only guy he liked, Gary Conley. But so far, I guess he's, he's not. he was just waiting for Daryl Worley. So he wasn't really a big Gary yeah. Conley fan. Well, it, it may be hard to adjust, right? We see this in college all the time. You want to put your own guys out there to prove that you can create a team that's going to be a winning team. Yeah. So, it, it's tough, I think, for some coaches to adjust to guys that aren't their guys. Exactly. And so maybe Gruden's just seeing that and, as And, I, and a I'm going to take some credit. I know I've been accepting my L, so I'm going to take a victory in this one. <laughs> People were just assuming that Garen Conner was going to be a great cornerback off the bat and, and, and get a start and be the starter. I'm like, how do you give this guy a starting job right away when he didn't even play much of right. a rookie year? He wasn't even proven. But now we are finding out it was because Daryl Worley was not available. So right. people are really hyped up on Garen Collier. I'm not saying he's a, he's a bust, but let's slow down. These cornerbacks take some time to get developed, and I don't know if John Green wants to develop them at all. Right. All right. Final rapid fire question: Is it time for the Raiders to tank <laughs> and trade? Ouch. That Oof. that hurts if you're a Raiders fan. Yeah. I would say I would say no because that's just probably not John Gruden's way, right? I don't know. He's been training a lot of <laughs> players. Remember that guy, Khalil Mack? I remember that. But that was before the season even started. So we obviously thought that that was going to be a great decision off the bat and that they were going to be able to win games without him. I know it's October 10th and it's still really early, but I kind of feel like John Green is a realist. If he knows his team is not doing anything this year, he's going to take a draft pick. Uh, he might be a realist, but he's also probably pretty prideful. No, no coach true. in that, their first yeah. year is going to want to come in and just say, Bust it. It's yeah, done. It's tough. If you're, Let's if move if you're on trading next some year. of your key players, your top players, and then how do you answer those questions? Like you can't say, "Well, we're tanking," so you got to find a way. Right. But one rumor that I saw, I don't think I don't know if it's true at all, but it's kind of interesting. Is Amari Cooper being on the trading block? He's not doing it. Oh. He's not doing well. And he in next year's his final year. If he wants an extension, do you pay Amari Cooper? Do you kind of just say, you know what? Go ahead. We didn't like what happened, and you trade him for something now, maybe a second round pick. I don't mm -hmm. know. But, and also Marshawn Lynch, maybe he wants to win to Super Bowl. He's an older veteran. Maybe he wants to go somewhere else, too. Uh, but that's the thing. It's so hard to rebuild in the NFL. It's not like you yeah. can, it's not like, you know, college, you can refresh and redo, yeah. and you're constantly doing that because guys are graduating and what have you. But it's so much harder in the NFL to just come in with a bunch of rookies or just trading all your most important parts, like Amari Cooper. That would be huge. It's a lot harder to yeah, then just go have a winning and season. And you have a season. brand new shiny stadium waiting for you. You want to fill the seats too. That's, exactly. That's tough. But like, again, when you trade Kilo Mac, I feel like nobody's safe. And I feel like if Derek Carr didn't get his contract before John Gruden arrived, Derek Carr would be on the hot seat too. So yeah. I don't think nobody is safe on this roster, especially how poorly they're playing. And like right. you said, maybe he wants to have his own blueprint on this team. He's gonna anybody who was drafted before his time mm -hmm. could be on the way out. But I don't, I'm not gonna say tanking. 
you don't want to lose games on purpose, but trading players, I can see that being an option. Yeah, and I and and to be fair, I don't think John Gruden's ever going to be thinking about, well, what's this going to do when we move to Vegas, right? That's probably yeah. not his priority when he's yeah, building his yeah. team. His but when you have building a ten, to win when games. You have a ten-year contract. You kind of peek ahead a little bit. <laughs> you you probably should, but he's building to win games. It's tougher yeah. though because you have that Raiders fan base that's here in Las Vegas that does want to be able to see Amari Cooper, Derek Carr, all all those guys play in the Las Vegas stadium. Yeah, and I'm sure people are telling him, hey, uh, the Golden Knights in Las Vegas are doing very well. <laughs> they have a great fan base, and people are already jumping our ship, and we're not even there yet. So you got to start winning. You want to have some type of, you know, appealing product before you get here, or no one's... I know Santa Fe, and you're going to get some type of buzz, but you want to have a big, big-time buzz, yeah. a big red carpet entrance in 2020. Mm -hmm. All right, before we go to previewing and predicting next week's game, let's go to some of our comments. We have Harry, who says, Reggie Nelson, Doug Martin... Maybe Marshawn Lynch to yeah. not return next season. I mean, he's a trading block, guys. I think he's uh, mentioning. Well, yeah, and and I and I understand because I think Doug Martin is. This is part of my bias coming in. Doug Martin was a Boise State guy. Oh, I'm right. from Boise, so I I think Doug Martin's better than where he's been playing and where he's been put in this Raiders offense. But you have Marshawn Lynch, so of course, yeah. why are you gonna switch I, in Doug Martin? I it's, don't want to be rough on your boy, but I know. what is Doug Martin doing on this Raiders team? Or even nothing. on an NFL roster? I don't know. But nothing. But he was great at Tampa Bay. It was just more of his off-the-field stuff that yeah, was yeah. And, rougher. And even when he was playing for Tampa Bay the last couple of years, the numbers showed that he wasn't the same guy when he started off. Yeah, and that's true. Again, this is another, another uh, off-season trope that people were really excited about. Uh, Oh, Doug Martin, he's going to be great. That the John Gruden kept selling. I'm like, no, he's not going to be a good running right. back. I know he's getting some carries here and there, but he's getting like four or five. And uh, I just don't think for him right. the Raiders is the right fit. I Why don't you draft a young running back? Like you see Al Alan Kamara with the Saints and uh, yeah. Kareem Hunt with the Chiefs. And Todd, I know Todd Gurley is a top pick, but some of these guys you can find in the back end of the draft, mm -hmm. you know, third, third round and fourth round. They haven't selected any running backs. They're going with the old guys. And yeah. I don't understand they're for running backs. And we've talked about this before. I mean, how much longer does Marshawn Lynch play in the league i mean he yeah. retired once already and he's, he's looking great but where's your young guy to kind of take them the, the right. mantle and then they they kind of just ignore running back yeah they don't they don't really have that going for them okay predictions <laughs> raiders seahawks all right gilbert we can't be as sunshiny this week honestly no i can't be as sunshiny no. this week about this um gosh i'm gonna say 30 to 6. Seahawks. Whoa. Yeah. That's a beatdown. That's a beatdown. <laughs> but here's the thing. Again, it's you're traveling to West Coast teams. Seahawks are riding a ton of motivation and a ton of momentum after that game against the Rams. I think they're the much better team. And Whoa, I just don't think. Much better. I, and that's saying something because <laughs> I, I just don't think this Raiders team is good enough to beat the Seahawks across the pond. Man. 30 to 6, that is rough, wow. isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at the You Raiders. don't have to be as rough as I am, but <laughs> okay. I'm just here to protect my win column, my, okay. my one no, victory I, I that you. I have. <laughs> Man, I'm looking at the Raiders' schedule, and, and there's some winnable games there with Seattle and the Colts and the 49ers, so I don't know. maybe they get to 4-4, four four, a three-game winning streak, but I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm not going to catch no. you up this week. I'm going to you know, stay you know, be one game behind you, and I'm going to take the Seahawks to win in London. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's a blowout. I think the, I, know, I know the Seahawks are, are, much, are not much. They're not much better than the Raiders, but they're a little better than the Raiders. So I'll go with the Seahawks. Uh, let's go with 17-13. Hmm, low scoring affair. Two West Coast teams playing in uh, London time time zone. I don't think they're they're, they're going to both be a little rusty. Yeah, that definitely. That travel is going to affect it a ton. But yeah, I just don't see the Raiders pulling out this one. And after this game, they have a bye. They have a by that they'll be able to recover and maybe get things together. Yeah, they'll come home, they'll play the Colts. The Colts are not, they're one and four also, so maybe they'll win that one, but I just don't see a London trip for the Raiders to come out victorious. All right, well, make sure that if you're watching now to comment all of your predictions, questions, and yes. flaming hot takes. We're here for the flaming hot takes. That's I, why I, more hot I, takes. Gotta, I gotta pick a blowout because I have to be here for a flaming hot take. <laughs> and I'm hoping in a lot of comments that people see that, like, hey, Elaine's wrong, and here's why. <laughs> and I'll use that for Absolutely. my mailbag. So, you know, give me some hot takes, give me some questions. I need more for my mailbag. I'm trying to get a, a good story together, but I haven't gotten many questions, guys. Goodness, that was because you were you were on the bench this week, covering, <laughs> yeah, covering McGregor yeah. and a bunch of other things. I'll be but back with the Raiders. I did not give up on the Raiders yet. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Make sure you submit all of your questions to Gilbert on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle again? At gmonsano24. At gmonsano24. You can submit all your questions or you could just comment them here because he comes and checks back and yeah. sees how many people say that he's real pretty on camera and stuff. So he wants to make <laughs> sure that he's that. looking at your... <laughs> so put a couple hard eyes too. <laughs> he wants to make sure he's seeing all your comments. And <laughs> if you comment, you may be featured in Gilbert's story. Yes. So make sure to do that. We'll be here next week for Vegas Nation Mailbag. He's Gilbert. I'm Lane. Thanks so much for joining us.